incredible to me. Like, I, I'm, I'm at Fossil Words sometimes, walking around, everyone meeting everybody and whatnot. It's, it's like seeing everyone that I know on the internet, but in person. It's just blowing my mind sometimes. But uh, my whole purpose on my speech here is uh, really just that everyone should really tell their story because it's such a unique lifestyle that we all live, especially in this community. If you live in New Hampshire, it's a world of difference from seeing what it is online. Um, but anyways, a little bit of background story of me. My name is Robin Thais. Um, I, I signed the Free State Project over a year ago. Uh, I was actually inspired by Derek Chase from this crime spree that what made me uh, sign. But I didn't make the I didn't really make the move like I need to get here until I saw what happened with Paul Tom and Bearcat, where Free Staters are labeled as terrorists. That was really my like I gotta get there. The shit's in the fan. I gotta you know I didn't I need to be a part of this. Um, I'm a volunteerist. I also do activism when I can. I try to. Uh, I do photography. I blog for Free Keen. Um, I do a YouTube channel called Volunteer Rebel. I also have a podcast slash YouTube show called The Rebel Love Show, which this man right here is my co-host. Um, and we do that uh, once a week, and it's really dedicated to everyone here because we're not preaching to the um, to like wake people up. It's to the choir. It's really just to illustrate what life is like here. So it's like a lifeline to people that have not made the move. Watch our show, learn what it's like living in, a, in the community. So we try to give aspects of what it's like day to day living here and the stories of different people that are living in the community. So everyone here has a such a unique story that really needs to be told. It's, it's so fascinating the way people live their lives in this community compared to what it's like outside of New Hampshire. Um, now for me, the story here is a big crux of uh, what I'm, I'm really passionate about because we're building this free society here in the Shire. And it's not something that you can even really see in a YouTube video or a podcast. Um, like the biggest thing that was really motivating me to move was I friend bombed everyone. I mean, anyone that was in a free state project uh, group or whatnot, I friended them. And I was basically living vicariously through their posts before I moved. Because they gave me an idea of what life is like here. And it does piss me off when there's a free stater that lives here that didn't accept my friend request and I see them in person and then they add me. It kind of a little pisses me off a little bit because I'm like, you have no idea from someone on the outside that is already ingrained into, into the culture of being a free stater, not having that access. It's just making a Facebook post about, you know, going to a meetup with, you know, 20 or 30 people. Oh my God! Like I was in, I was, I was going to Ron Paul meetups in Chicago where eight people would show up out of eight million people in the in the county. You know, here I can post on a uh, Facebook post, a uh, Facebook group that hey, there's a potential new mover coming. Let's go have dinner, and 20 people will show up. And that's all. That's from one little Facebook post. Um, that doesn't happen anywhere else, and it's something that you would see. If you're on Facebook and you add other friends and, you know, it's just do, posting what you're doing, people will see what that story is like and they'll be inspired to see, you know, people are really living free and doing what they can living free here. Um, and then you have the whole agorism movement in, especially in Manchester, but across the state where you have uh, agorist cab services and multiple agorist food uh, services where they deliver for you any time of night and whatnot. Uh, there's agorist uh, repair places, and basically you can survive almost in, within the community doing agorism because there's enough people that want to support a business outside of the state. But again, that's something you don't see anywhere else except for in New Hampshire. Um, and enough, not enough people are talking about what they're doing publicly uh, in order to do that. That's why I'm really telling you, you need to tell the story of your life, your move, how you got here and what you're doing once you get here because it's such a unique lifestyle that does not exist outside of New Hampshire. Um, now, uh, again with agorism, I, I'm, that's the biggest thing that's blown me away here than anything else, seeing people work outside of the system and doing whatever they can. You, you feel that passion from other people that are living here. You see the uh, they're doing everything they can to work outside the state, and that's something, you, it's like, they're not just talking the talk, they're walking the walk. And that is something you do not see outside, and it's something that I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell the story, you know, 
I'll take a photo of like I just ordered, you know, I just paid uh, for some crab cakes with Bitcoin. I mean, come on, that doesn't exist anywhere else, you know. And it's just, Mateus, isn't it a shame that their company, they're not around at the moment? Yeah, I know that they could turn a profit, I guess. And Are I, they coming back? I hope so. But I hope so, too. At any rate, there's always going to be more. The market will demand that they come back. How many poppers are too good to, to lay they're too good. They're, they were too good to go away. Yeah. Um, but again, the, the, the whole thing with agorism, you're not seeking permission from the state, and you see that here, which is amazing. Uh, plus the activism that goes on here. Um, I mean, I'm a volunteer, so I don't want the state to exist, but at the same time, I'm not against anarchists running for state house and whatnot. You know, there's a great anarchist in the state house now, like Mark Warren and Emily Sandblade. And you see what they're doing, and you see all these politicals going, but at the same time, they're associating with the civil disobedience crowd, and the agorist crowd, and the Bitcoin crowd, and they're all working for the same purposes of living free. And you have this community, and just talking about it, being open on the internet about it is a huge deal, especially for me. I, I literally live vicariously through all these posts from people. Um, let me see. But like, living here, you are, you're surrounded by people that just want to be passionate about living free, and you see that. You gotta tell the story. And again, another aspect of this community that I try to tell in a lot of my posts and what I do, we talk about it on our show all the time, and Tase was on our show about it, Bitcoin. Bitcoin flows here. I've talked to multiple people today that don't live here, and they're saying, yeah, I just did, a first, my, I just did my first Bitcoin transaction in person. I, I do Bitcoin transactions in person every day. Every day I'm doing something. If you go to, if you're going out to dinner with a bunch of free staters, and you don't have enough uh, Federal Reserve notes um, in your wallet, you're like, hey, can someone uh, cover my tab while paying in Bitcoin? I've never had one person say no, not once. There's, um, again, all the agorist uh, businesses throughout Manchester, they accept Bitcoin. There's business that accepts Bitcoin in person. It is a normal thing in this community to use Bitcoin. It's not, it's not unnormal, like, oh my God, I just used Bitcoin for the first time buying coffee or something like that. No, that's. That's a normal occurrence with the Shire Co-op and everything else. You pay for Bitcoin. Most people prefer Bitcoin in this community than anything else. Um, and that's something I try to tell and, and post. And it seems mundane. It's like people are like, why are you posting a picture of you buying something with Bitcoin? Because other people out there don't know that that's a normal thing. And I'm trying to say, like, when something mundane for me, it's not mundane for someone out there. And there's, they, that might, just a picture of something buying a Bitcoin might inspire someone to come here and do the same thing. Um, now, the biggest reason why I want to do this talk is, again, being the media. Um, like, I've come up against some walls, and kind of my speech, a little bit, is a, uh, uh, sometimes I get upset that free staters aren't as public, they're very about their privacy, which I understand, I get that, uh, but at the same time, I didn't come here to hide. You know, the state is what it is. I'm not here to hide. I'm here to tell the story. I'm here to live free now, not later, or hide within the community just to be around, around like-minded people, which is a great reason to be here, but be active. Even if that active, um, asking what can you do for the community, but even just being active, making a Facebook post about what you did say, I went to a bunch of free stairs to a Bitcoin meetup, or you know, there's 30 people there, or I had we went to a breakfast, or you know, I help do this activism for this person. I'm, I'm writing a blog about starting my own garden or something along those lines. Whatever it might be, take a photo, make a Facebook page, um, make a Facebook post about what you're doing here or when you're making the move. I've had multiple people come up to me throughout the week or the last two days saying, I watched your move. It was amazing. Like, everyone, if you have not moved yet, document it. If you're gonna make the move, take photos. People love seeing, the watching other people make the move. And also, word of advice, friend everyone. Go friend everyone on Facebook, make it known you're moving, because when you get here, you already have friends, and you're not gonna be like outside of the, uh, the circle. Uh, please do that, but document everything you're doing. Put it out in the open, because Again, we're here not to hide. We're here to live free and inspire other people to join us. And if that's not your purpose here, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. That's why I'm here. Um, 
But being public, telling the story, you can change the perception of a lot of people. Like, add people that aren't just liberty minded, you know, especially like friends or coworkers or whatnot. Um, add them, see what your life is like, inspire them to come to, a, especially once you come here, inspire them to come to a meetup or a free state or, or uh, um, activity going on or whatnot. Uh, social media is huge. I'm not saying you gotta do it 24 seven, I'm just saying a simple post about what you're doing in your life is a huge, huge thing, especially for the move. There's so many free staters out there around the country and the world, and they watch when people move. And that's another thing. Would the Free State Project even exist if there wasn't internet? I mean, I, wouldn't, I would not have discovered this if it was not for the internet. And I would have not uh, made the friends I have here in this community if it was not for the internet. And how can any of us not post something and not use that technology to inspire other people to get here to do the exact same thing? Uh, the internet's very powerful for social media and it should be used like, I, I would not be here. I would not know of any of this. I would still be living my old life, like in the matrix. Like, I jack myself because of the internet. I went all the way down, and I found here, and I found the community that I belong to. And I'm just trying to pay it forward to help other people find their place here as well. But like, you have so much technology at your hand. We're living in this age where technology is at the tip of our fingers. Right now, I use my smartphone for almost everything. All right, I'm connected to the community via Facebook. It's always with me. I can contact anyone that I need to. Um, I can take a photo really quick, throw it up on Instagram. It goes to Twitter and Facebook. It takes like two seconds to do. It's there, everyone can see it. I can take a video really quick and throw it on YouTube if I want on a raw channel, which I've been doing throughout the week. So if you, if you, don't, if you are following me, I'm taking photos left and right. I'm taking videos left and right. I'm throwing it all up on the internet so people can watch. For people that aren't here, they can see what it's like being at Porta Fest. I highly recommend that other people do the same thing. Now, but yeah, social media, use that. Use your phone. Use it. You got it, and you have the you have the a you have a piece of technology in your hand that has access to every single human being on the planet, theoretically. You can literally use your consciousness to reach out to the world and tell like what you're doing and what's up. And other people, you're reaching out to other people. You're not just making a Facebook post. Your consciousness is reaching out into expressing ideas and your life to other people. Use it. Don't don't hide from it. Be social. Be a social butterfly, especially online. Don't you know if you're following other free stairs, talk to them. You know, say hi. Like message them. Comment on their posts and whatnot. Don't just like follow it. And be the same way. Post about your, you know, what you believe in and what you want to do, and the fact that you're coming and what you're doing to get here. It's a, it's a huge thing. Um, now, I'm going to. If you really want to do what I do, I'm going to list the. Uh, also, by the way, if you guys have any questions, please ask. I'll, I'll stop what I'm doing and answer a question. Um, technology that I use, I use a. Uh, I'm a poor activist, so I'm, I'm just doing this on my side. This is my passion. I don't get paid for this. FSB is not for me. Um, <laughs> I don't get any cook money. Uh, anyways, I, I use my smartphone for a lot of social networking. This is like, this. I feel like I don't have access to the world if I don't have this on me. I use this for everything. Uh, well, not everything. Uh, for blogging, I use WordPress. Uh, that's my go to for blogging. Uh, Obviously, I utilize YouTube as much as I can. I post as much videos as I can to YouTube. Uh, we In Manchester right now, me and a bunch of other fellow actors, including these two uh, guys right here, uh, we post a lot. Every video that we take, we post the unedited raw version straight up to uh, youtube.com slash mantraw, where it's just a bunch of multiple different activists within the community. They take the video, it's going out there. Sometimes it's irrelevant, but sometimes it is. Um, but we throw that out there. Like case in point, um, a uh, fellow activist uh, in uh, Manch, and using technology, using Facebook, using social media, he got pulled over by the police. All right, and he was uh, he had a ride with him. He had another free stater in the car. That free stater posted to a uh, local private Facebook group of people in the community. Within minutes, there are multiple different activists that went around cop-locking that car 
coming out, videotaping the police, documenting everything that they were doing so that he was being held accountable, the police were being held accountable. Where else does that happen? Nowhere. And there's video of that going to be up on that channel. Mm -hmm. That video will be up there. Um, but that's just an example. I mean, he's, he, didn't, he wasn't arrested or anything like that, but I don't want to go into the backstory of that. But this is an example of using social media and how it's a unique situation here that that happens, but that doesn't happen pretty much anywhere else. Where else can you post on Facebook and a bunch of people come out and help you with the police? <laughs> you know, that doesn't happen anywhere. You know, I mean, the fact that people cop block here is amazing in itself. Um, but technology wise, we use WordPress, we use YouTube. Uh, if we're going to broadcast live, Google Hangouts is great. You can broadcast with Google Hangouts live on YouTube. Uh, really simple to do. You know, you can, it's simplistic. Um, if you want to make videos, uh, yeah, you can use BitTorrent uh, to download your, you know, expensive, you know, for, uh, video editing software, or just download Movie Maker. It's actually pretty simple to use, and you can make decent videos with it. Uh, and also, don't ask for permission to use anyone's video. Don't ever do that. Uh, like anything that, that's created in a community, if you want to make like a montage of something, or people, like. If that's like your activism, like start editing a video of different activists doing things, do it. Use any of our content or anyone else's content. Don't ever ask for permission to use media um, or anything else for that matter. Uh, other, other equipment that we use right now, we have a, I just need a simple Sony Handycam. Uh, I bought like a little handle, track, uh, handle on there for it as well, but um, obviously a smartphone if you don't have the technology to buy that. That was like a $200 camera. Um, we use that, uh, we use a laptop to um, edit video. We have a podcast studio set up. We, have a, uh, we use a Behringer mixer. It seems to be the most popular one, just the most podcast. If you wanted to go down that road, I know, if, like, you know everyone and their, and their mom has a podcast nowadays in the Liberty community, um, which I think is a great thing. Don't, I'm not knocking that. Everyone should talk about what their story is. Yes? Aren't you a little concerned about raising your head so much online, I mean, it is known that, like, I think you mentioned the bear cat earlier. Yes. yes. That, doesn't it concern you at all that you are kind of painting this big red target on your back? They can come get me. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I didn't come here to hide. I didn't come here to hide. I'm not doing anything wrong or immoral. If the state wants to use violence against me, they're going to use violence against me regardless. I'm not scared of them. You know, if I'm going to go to jail for filming or talking to people, I'm not doing it. Even if it's agorism, like you're not doing anything wrong. Now, mind you, fair warning, you pick and choose your battles. Okay, case in point. I'm not, I'm not going full anarchist out there. I'm not driving without plates. I still have a piece of plastic in my wallet called an ID. All right, I'm not, I'm picking and choosing my battles and every activist should do that. You shouldn't, you, be, you should be willing to um, take uh, the responsibility of what happens in the activism that you do, but you should always do something. Social media is like the simplest activism you can do. You're just talking about what you're doing. You know, it's not like you're actually, it's not like you're, you know, as much as I love Rich Paul, he's like selling pot in the open and whatnot, you know, I'm taking that up. As much as I commend him, he's a fucking hero. That's not my activism. I, I, I'm not going to be a pot dealer, but, you know, that's what, that was him. Everyone should, but that's his battle. That was the battle he wanted to choose, and that my more power to him. There's other people in here that are about um, uh, right to travel, and they're, they're right to travel activists. There's people in the community that don't have place, don't have licenses, and, you know, they do what they can. They're not arrested at the moment. But everyone has their own activism that they're doing. But you gotta pick and choose your battle. My battle is, uh, yeah, social media for sure. Um, but uh, I do that, and uh, you should really tell your story. Don't be afraid. I mean, if you came here being afraid of what might happen, I'm like, I want to live free now. I, I really do. And what am I going to do, wait forever? The state's not going to go away by itself. The more people that we can get to our side, like communicating to them what life is like here, the better. Uh, but if you want to do uh, podcasting, some tech that you should use, uh, we kind of go hardcore. We have a Behringer uh, mixer, a USB one. We have four preamps on it. So we have, multi we have four different mics. Um, a great site to use, by the way. No, I'm just going to... He's gonna bitch at me about this. Uh, Creamy Radio Audio, Michael Bean's like, this is a great blog. I know, I know. 
this, whatever, TBD. Um, <laughs> Uh, but if, if not, there's also great USB mics that are just like by yourself. You, there's a Blue Yeti out there that's a great mic to use uh, to get better audio quality. Um, software that we use uh, for hosting, we use Libsyn, or, or I know a lot of the podcasters use SoundCloud. You can use those to host your uh, host a website. I mean, host a website, host the podcast so you can get it out there so people can listen. Also, set it up on iTunes, set it up on Stitcher. Uh, and don't be afraid to, you don't have to pimp yourself out as a brand, but don't be afraid to say what you're doing. If you're doing any kind of activism, say you're doing it. Get, get community to help. Once you move here as well, if you're going to do something, reach out to people and say, hey, I'm doing this. Create a Facebook event and invite people to it. You know, don't be afraid to do that. Like be, again, public about what you're doing because by doing so, you're going to get more people to help out and you're going to get more people to see what's going on. Uh, what's the point of doing activism if no one knows that you did it? All right. And another thing, in New Hampshire, there are two reasons why you do activism. If you're out there, you know, outside of the Shire, outside of New Hampshire, the only reason why you're an activist in any way is to change the status quo. That is not the case here. When you're doing activism, you are doing it for two reasons. A, yeah, you do want to change the status quo. But you're doing it because you want to inspire other people to move and you see, so that other people can see that something, anything, is going on here. All right? Because I'm, I came from Chicago where nothing was going on ever, you know, in regards to liberty activism. But I'm watching like free keen videos and other, you know, YouTube channels and whatnot, and I see all this stuff going on. I can, I can confirm the inspirational part of the story. Um, you know, I travel around the country going to various libertarian events, and immediately, I, or you're from New Hampshire, tell me, whatever. Um, and I, I give talks, I give a talk on, on legis uh, doing the, the in-system activism, and people in other parts of the country are flat out floored at what we're doing, and they can't, they can't believe it's real. But we tell them it's real, and I'll teach you how to do it where you live, or you can come help us, so, People who don't believe that this, it, just watching people's faces, they see that, wait, we actually can't have freedom. Like, you can see that it's in reach yeah. here, that really, that the inspirational effect of what we do, um, don't don't underestimate it. For those of you who are here, people know it, and, and out there, I mean, <coughs> take what you learned this week and go do it where you are. Don't don't wait to come here. Um, we, gotta, we gotta make freedom happen everywhere, but I, I can confirm, I, all over the country I go, even even like professional activists are, are, are blown away by what we're doing here, um, and really, I think they're trying to up their game to, to you know be, be be as good as we are. Well, yeah, I mean, if if we can't at least inspire other people to move here, which is what I want to do, I don't I don't really care. In all honesty, once I got here, I don't really care about the rest. of the country. <laughs> like, but just come here. Like you're doing, yeah, you're, you're an activist in you know California. Great. Uh, how'd that work out for you, man? <laughs> No, not well, right? Not well. Um, but uh, here, you can actually have an impact. You can, you know, bring people on board and whatnot, and inspire people to get here. Um, another kind of thing that I want to talk about um, it's more of a side thing, but it still has to do with being the media and like discussing what your story is. Is uh, I mean, I'm I'm a big tech guy. All right, I see the rise of technology, and you know, some people hate the singularity that's going to happen. Some people are for it. That's a whole other talk in itself. But <laughs> technology is going at such a fast pace. Like case in point, like this smartphone. You know, this smartphone. It, it literally. Well, I don't have internet because there's no. I've been using T-Mobile in New Hampshire, which is my own phone. Uh, um, <laughs> but this this device has you know, it's probably a hundred times more powerful than my desktop computer 15 years ago, all right? And it fits in my pocket. It has, you know, it can access uh, satellites to geosynchronous orbit where I know where I am at any given time. I have friends all over the country and the like world. a million times more powerful than the computer they use to send us to the moon. Exactly. <laughs> and what is this going to look like in 10 years? You know, like, I, I use this in the community. With every, I, it's literally, like, I'm tell, almost telepathic with everyone in the community and whatnot because I'm always sharing my thoughts and ideas, my consciousness out there on the world. What is this going to look like in five years, in 10 years, even farther? What happens when wearable tech becomes an actual thing? 
like Google Glass is here, but it's not really adopted yet. But imagine like activists in New Hampshire, multiple of them having wearing Google Glass and like you know being able to like stream live without holding you. Know, What's a cameraman? Like you know, instead of doing that, like actually like walking up to people and like live streaming their interactions with like a, a judge or a court or a cop or like going out and doing something like cop blacking or whatever that might be. But being able to stream that activism live and documenting it and having other people watch it live or switch uh, to like different, you know, there's some big huge thing going on again, multiple people just walking around and then you can have that live stream on some like video feed. I'm just saying hypothetical, like what could happen just in the near future by the end of the year or next year, um, tech is gonna get 10 times better, 100 fold better than what this is now. We need to embrace it. We need to uh, allow people to see what, we need to be on the cutting edge of information getting out there on the internet, not be technological Luddites and not talk about what's going on here. Um, anyways, that's pretty much my speech. It only lasted 30 minutes. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to ask. Do you have any suggestions for like alternative social media? So for the people who don't want to be part of Google or Facebook? Uh, I mean, I use Twitter. I'm on Twitter a lot. Uh, follow me on volu at Voluntary Rebel. Um, I'm on Google Plus, which I really don't use. Uh, Look at me, maybe? Look at me, maybe. I mean, it could be useful for the purposes you're trying. Yes, but um, I have not purchased a membership, and I don't plan on purchasing a membership. Maybe Diaspora? I don't know. Diaspora or Diaspora? I don't know. Sure, if there's people on it. Right, the, here's the crux of the thing, okay? <laughs> this community lives and dies on Facebook. That's where everyone is. In honesty, sometimes you have to go behind, I mean, I hate Facebook. I really do, but that's where everyone's at. So that's where I'm at. Until I hate the day- the idea of social media in general, that's why I ask my question. Yeah, I mean, that's where, that's where everyone's at. I go where people are. If, if people abandoned YouTube or, or iTunes or whatever for my, my show or whatnot, I'll go to wherever that's at. Uh, wherever there's people in, in the community that are interested in this, I will post to it. But there's a, I know that like, there's not really much of a living presence on Tumblr, so like, someone needs to get on that. Yeah, there is. Is there? Yeah, it's dominated by mutualists and other interesting kind of liberty adjacent people. Well, what are you doing on Tumblr? Cat pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to have cat. You're not a true anarchist if you don't post a cat picture from time to time. You have to post cat pictures. <laughs> it's a rule. Yeah, it's, it's a rule. You gotta have cat pictures, you gotta have bulletproof coffee, you gotta talk about Polly at some point, you gotta watch Firefly. Yeah, there's a bunch of different things in this community that are like... Paleo. And oh, paleo, you can't forget paleo. And bacon. And bacon, yes. No true yeah. Scotsman. Exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you gotta be social. I, I, I hate Facebook, man, but I, I post it because literally this community is very, it's super Facebook central. There's been I know there's been ideas to start up our own social network and stuff like that, but the problem is most people won't know about it and there's not like apps and until like, I, I use my Facebook app on my phone, you know, I'm not going on a web browser and I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to use an app and again, I hate it, I hate the fact that we rely on Facebook so heavily, they can just turn that off and the majority of this community would be, you know, they wouldn't know what's going on. That's, so the, I, that's the idea behind Liberty Me, it's not controlled by we're, we're, we're not, Liberty Me, you're the customer, not the prize. I know. How many people are even on Liberty Me? Well, you gotta start somewhere. How many <laughs> people moved to New Hampshire in the 2004, you know? Yeah, no, I know. Uh, Find people who are doing activism that's nice and supportive. Maybe I'll make a Liberty Me account after this. Maybe I'll, do, maybe I'll jump on that bandwagon and see how it goes. Shutdown.org. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It's a dot M -E. Yeah, I thought, yes, Liberty dot M-E. Yeah, it's Liberty Me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions? For those of us that work in mainstream media, how can we then work in those confines? How do you work in mainstream media? I'm a reporter for a radio. Oh. Uh, what can you do to help us? Yeah. Talk about us on your radio show <laughs> or a radio station. It's difficult when you can't bring stuff up like that or like if words that you're trying to use get called on being biased or not, it's quite difficult. So being able to put in those words, like I still put in words, if I'm saying, you know, X amount of something dollars, it's X amount of tax dollars. If it's a, if it's something going to a corporation or some other company, it's a subsidy.
can spread that message. If you're going to be a journalist, um, I understand you don't want to be biased. You can just tell what's going on. Like that's the point. My thing is say I am biased. I'm trying to get people to move. But you can just say like, hey, this stuff happened in this city, and there's like this activism that happened here, yeah. or like you know, talk about how this business is accepting Bitcoin or something. Yeah, I did that one where I went and made a Bitcoin ATM come to our city. So. Yes, though unfortunately, why is that not a Bitcoin ATM in Nashville? You're 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 in the not, Bitcoin community. It's not cost effective. Besides, it's not cost effective. Well, besides all the. Everyone takes Bitcoin, so like the need for a standalone machine to do the transactions is less relevant if people in the community are willing. I would use it every day. Oh, okay, well, get on. I don't know. I don't run the quill. I don't know. I, I know you don't run the quill. I'm just saying it should be there. Should be one there or somewhere in Manchester, maybe a, a grocery shop or something like that. There should be one. Yeah. Um, that's it. I got nothing else to say. Let's ask. Thank you.